What if we added the equivalent of 1,300 football fields to the tip of Manhattan? This was the proposal of a recent op-ed in the New York Times. Increase the borough by about 12% in order to mitigate two of the city's most pressing problems. Proposed by economics professor Dr. Jason Barr, the plan is, admittedly, a big ask for a city with lots of other problems. We knew, we knew going into this that we were going to ruffle some feathers. Um... But I think feather ruffling is important in the 21st century. There's evidence from all over the world that doing stuff like this can be really useful for crowded oceanside cities. But the process to do so, reclaiming land from the ocean, is rife with potential downsides. So is this a proportional response to gigantic problems or a zany harebrained scheme that will cause more harm than good? Hey, if you watched yet another video intro about New York from us, you must really like it here. So just go ahead and like and subscribe. Thanks. Land reclamation is the process of creating usable land from oceans, seas, or wetlands like marshes. Generally speaking, there are two ways to reclaim land. First, remove any water and replace it with rocks or dirt or sand, possibly with the help of supporting dikes. Or second, just, just chuck a bunch of rocks, dirt, or sand in there until you reach the top of the water. It's a technique that's been used to both create space and protect against encroaching seas for thousands of years. Floating dredgers pump and dump a mixture of sea bottom sand and water until a new piece of real estate is there for the selling. Especially in really low-lying areas. Well, the, the Netherlands is lowland. <laughs> They're much of their land is like below sea level, you know. So if you're going to have a city below sea level, you got to figure out a way to protect that. <laughs> protected against the sea. Which explains the general Dutch Twitter reaction to Dr. Barr's proposal. I saw a bunch of, uh, of tweets from people in the Netherlands, and they're like, we could do this in five minutes. I mean, we've been doing this for hundreds of years. Like, this is not a big deal. Places like Boston and Mexico City have been reclaiming land for centuries, but the first big modern land reclamation projects started in the Netherlands in the 1970s, and it quickly became trendy around the globe. Really trendy. Here are the top three land reclaimers by square miles. And, of course, football fields. I should clarify, I mean American football fields. <laughs> I'm sorry to the entire rest of the world. Tons of countries in Asia have spent much of the 21st century in a land reclamation boom, especially, again, those in really low-lying areas. Much of lower Manhattan itself actually used to be swampy wetlands until the Europeans arrived and immediately started filling it in. As soon as the Dutch arrived in the 1620s, they started, <laughs> they started draining the wetlands, they started expanding the shorelines. And... Much later was this plan, originally proposed in 1911, to add more than 32,000 acres to New York, or 24,000 football fields. Which makes Dr. Barr's 1,300 football field proposal seem downright manageable. Eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that I haven't yet revealed which two problems could be addressed by doing this. In short, the critical housing shortage and the threat of rising oceans. And in long, you'll just have to watch to find out. So here's current Manhattan, and here's Dr. Barr's proposed Manhattan 2.0, or New Manahata an homage to the Lenape word for the area. New Manahata would extend about 2.6 miles from the current tip of Manhattan, absorbing Governor's Island en route. Extended subway lines from Manhattan and Brooklyn would connect the new land to the rest of the city, and the whole thing would be larger than the Upper West Side. Now, if you're thinking, boy, this sounds expensive, how are we going to pay for it? Fair enough, but Dr. Barr's an economist, so he has thought about this. So the reason why the economics can potentially work is because the actual market price is so much greater than the construction prices. And so the city could potentially capture that difference and use it to think big. Yeah, it's like as soon as you make it, it's already worth a gazillion dollars. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Just by virtue of the fact that it exists makes it incredibly valuable. Why? Because New York City is valuable. I mean, it's a global city, it's a productive city, it's a fun city. With its proposed 178,000 new housing units, Dr. Barr's dream outcome is a new neighborhood that's welcoming to all income levels, with an emphasis on public transit, walkability, and cycling. Not to mention a major relief for a hugely overcrowded city. Here's where it gets especially interesting. Making this much more Manhattan would push vulnerable areas like Broad and Wall Streets further inland, but not in a sacrificing the people who live on New Manhattan 
to save Wall Street kind of way, because they too would be protected. First, by elevating the new land 13 to 15 feet, which is higher than the highest flooding of Hurricane Sandy. And second, by this strip of green right here. That green strip is the piece de resistance of New Manahata, wetland ecologies. Creating wetlands, you can create natural buffers for storm surges. Rather than having just, you know, the, the water and the land, if you have some kind of intermediate zone, it could absorb a certain amount of the, the storage, storm surges as they come through. Of course, where there are harebrained schemes, there are also big potential downsides. Dredging is causing permanent changes to current systems that carry developing fish and coral through the marine ecosystem. Land reclamation can be environmentally devastating. Marine life can become either displaced or destroyed entirely. In particular, the New York, New Jersey Harbor has only recently become clean enough to welcome back an old friend, the humpback whale. And that's just the most visually obvious example of the harbor's recovered biodiversity. At this point, you might be wondering, this guy's an economist. Why is he recommending something that could be so potentially devastating when it's outside his area of expertise? And it's a criticism that Dr. Barr is very familiar with. There's any, any number of reasons why there are ecological problems. I get that. I mean, I'm not unsensitive to the, the potential harm, but we are facing drastic problems. The reaction to this piece was mixed. Dr. Barr says he got generally positive feedback from fellow economists and generally negative feedback from ecologists. Makes sense. Comments on the New York Times website were critical is a nice word for it. Twitter had the most fun takes, including some approving Dutch people and many people pointing out that New York is not exactly known for its speedy completion of infrastructure projects. But for now, it's just a proposal, like several other proposals to expand or fortify other parts of the island, like this one in East River Park, which is currently causing a massive public backlash. So for now, whether it's worth taking seriously or not just depends on your perspective. So what is that perspective? Tell us in the comments. And give us your best name for the new part of the island. It's like, I feel like this is a huge opportunity for us to name it something great. And now for the people who think that the nose ring nullifies all my credibility, I will now remove it and redo the same script, no changes from the top. Okay, here we go.